Bonnie, thank you so much for joining me. First of all, tell me a little bit about 911 Wildlife. Well, uh, 911 Wildlife is a wildlife conflict mediation company. What does that mean? That means that when somebody is having a problem with urban wildlife, we try to solve it in a very humane and um, cooperative way. Explain how you actually work. Well, the most common thing that people call us about, for example, would be squirrels in the attic. They're hearing noises in their ceiling, and they think that there might be an animal up there. So we would go to the house and, first of all, find the hole where the animal is getting in and out of. Then we would go in the attic and find whether or not there's juveniles in the nest. And we would find a way to humanely evict the animal without causing the animals to be injured or orphaned. What does that mean? That's a good question. Uh, that means that we would gather up the babies by hand and we would put them in what we call a reunion box on the outside of the roof. Then we install a device on the hole that works like a one-way door. So when the mother squirrel or the mother raccoon comes out of the one-way door, she's not able to get back in the attic, but she is able to retrieve her babies and move them to another den site. And these animals always have multiple den sites. Huh. Why is the timing so important for what you're doing right now? This is the peak of the birthing season. So this is when squirrels and raccoons and birds are all have young, and so they're looking for cavities to give birth in. And so this is when people are more likely to have conflicts with animals. What type of animals do you see the most of? What type Squirrels of definitely are the most common animals that people end up with having in their in their attic or in their chimney. And when you discover, all right, I'm a homeowner, I have rattling around in my attics, why shouldn't I go up there and do it? Well, I would compare it to an electrical problem. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of people that think, oh, well, I can just go and put mothballs in my attic or I can put a, a, a trap in my attic. Um, but I would compare it to if you have an electrical problem, it's probably not a good idea to try and fix it yourself. Uh, this is where it's much better to call professionals who deal with wildlife problems on a daily basis because what we see so often is somebody tries to solve the problem themselves and they end up making it much worse. Right. And why don't you give us, give us some hints. Tell our, sure. our listeners what are some of the ways that they can prevent this from happening and, and use your services if needed. Right. And it's that old thing about an ounce of prevention. Right. <laughs> uh, one of the best ways to prevent squirrels from moving into your attic is to make sure that your tree branches are cut back because overhanging tree branches are like a welcome mat that encourage animals to get onto the roof. And once they're on the roof, then they find loose shingles and warp siding and rotten wood and that's why they end up in the ad. So what about the humanitarians and, and the people for animal rights? Are they for you? Or do they think that this is a good way to approach the problem? Yes, that's where we're so different from other wildlife control companies. Uh, we're the only wildlife control company in Texas that's endorsed by the Humane Society of the United States. We also work very closely with the Wildlife Center of Texas. Um, this is the only wildlife control company in Texas that's owned and operated by wildlife rehabilitators. The whole purpose for the company mm -hmm. was that we saw so many animals being injured and orphaned by pest control companies, right. and we tried to do outreach to change their practices, and we hit a, a you know, we were hitting our head against a brick wall uh, because their motivation was financial. Mm -hmm. um, so six years ago, we found out that the Humane Society had written a business plan for any wildlife rehabilitator who wanted to start a wildlife control company on the principle of if we want it done right, we need to do it ourselves. Do you guys stay busy? Yes, we do. It's been very exciting how the response has been to the company. Um, we not only get calls from people who are compassionate and who are concerned about wanting the animals treated uh, appropriately, but we also get a huge number of calls from people 
who have heard about us and heard that they, they may not, their top priority may not be that we're humane. Their top priority is that we charge less and that we give a 10-year guarantee. Yeah. And so that's been really exciting to have that opportunity of those folks that call us and we get the chance to maybe change their attitudes towards the animals and solve their problem at the same time. How long have you been an animal rights advocate? Well, I first started being a wildlife rehabilitator in 2002, and my very first experience was raising a litter of seven baby raccoons that had been orphaned by a chimney sweep. They had been pulled out of a chimney, which chimneys are one of the most common urban den sites for raccoons. Uh, Raccoons see that chimney as a perfect hollow tree, Mm. and they have no trouble climbing in and out of it. And inside that chimney is a smoke shelf, and on that shelf is where the mother raccoon will give birth. And um, so that was my very first experience. What areas does 911 Wildlife service? Well, we started in Dallas, and we serve the whole Dallas-Fort Worth area. And last year, we started service in Houston. So we now cover the entire Houston area. How can our listeners get in touch with you? Well, they can call us at 713-287-1911, and they can also visit our website, which is 911wildlife.com. Bonnie, thank you so much for joining us. Anything else you want to tell our listeners? No, thank you. I would just say if somebody is hearing noises in their attic, to call us immediately so that we can help them. Excellent. Bonnie, Bonnie Bradshaw, thank you for joining us.